Will drones make jets and helicopters obsolete in warfare? Uh, typically, this would be a roundup question, but I kind of want to focus on this specific question because over the past couple of years, it's been like really trendy to call something obsolete. So this is going to be a short one, but I wanted it to be its own video because I didn't want it to get lost in the shuffle. Uh, and you know what else is an obsolete? Extra wallets. I'm traveling right now. I'm actually in Ohio, and lately my favorite traveling wallet has been this Exter. So first off, I'm traveling with a lot of bags, and the one-handed opening of the Exter wallet, I press this button, my cards pop out. That is really useful to me. This thing is really slim. It's roughly the height of a Walker's biscuit, and it fits right into your pocket. Now, there's a loop for carrying cash. The pop-up mechanism holds five cards. If you need more space, there's a secondary card slot back here. And this actually holds your tracking card. It's available for both Android and Apple. I have an Apple, so I can use my Find My feature to find my wallet. I'm right here. If you're thinking of a gift, there's plenty of colors to choose from. You can get your extra at partner.extra.com slash Ryan Macbeth. Use code Ryan Macbeth to get 40% off until May 19th for extra spring sale. I have been carrying this wallet for uh, the past two months now. I really like this thing, and I think you will too. Okay, think about this. Uh, infantrymen uh, have been fighting wars basically since the beginning of warfare, right? Whenever that first caveman grabbed a stick and sharpened it and poked somebody because he didn't like the way he was looking at his girl. Um, infantrymen get killed the easiest. They've been massacred in trenches. They've been mowed down by machine guns. They've been buried alive by artillery barrages. But nobody ever calls infantrymen obsolete. Why? Because, you know, even in the age of drones and tanks and precision-guided munitions, you still need someone on the ground to secure territory and make decisions in real time. And the same logic applies to manned aircraft. Drones are great, but they don't do everything a manned jet or helicopter can do. Drones are dependent on one thing, and that is the electromagnetic spectrum. And there's only one of those. Uh, if you're up against a near-peer adversary with sophisticated electronic warfare capabilities like Russia or China, the real contest will be for the electromagnetic spectrum. Once you dominate that spectrum, you can basically dominate air and ground. But nothing moves unless that spectrum is dominated. Manned aircraft, on the other hand, they don't have that problem. Yeah, they still use communications and sensors, but when you have a human in the cockpit, you don't have to worry about a lost signal turning your multi-million dollar fighter into a falling brick. And that means options. Options to react in real time, options to push through jamming, options to improvise when the unexpected happens. Now, ideally, we could fight through jamming with autonomous killer robots, but there's a few steps we have to get through first. The old Reaper drones, where you have a pilot and a weapon sensor operator, they were called HIDL, or Human in the Loop drones. People decide what to look at, what to target. The next phase of this evolution are HODL drones. These are drones with a human on the loop. So think of some of the loyal wingman type drones we've seen, uh, like the uh, XQ-59 Valkyrie, that can engage a target autonomously, but only after being told to do so by the pilot. And the next phase in evolution after this are the HOODL drones. That is human out of the loop. And these are honest to God, totally autonomous killer robots. Right now, Drones still have a human in the loop, at least American drones. And that means someone is pressing the button, telling it to fire, telling it to engage. But if you really want drones to replace human piloted aircraft, you need them to make life or death decisions on their own. No lag, no waiting for approval. They make the decision to fire by themselves. And before you say, but Ryan would never allow a robot to kill people, we already do. It's called the Patriot Missile System. It's called the Aegis Combat System. You know, these are fully... Uh, autonomous under certain conditions. The Patriot can track and engage targets on its own. Aegis, I mean, you know, the operators just kind of sit back, let Aegis system do the thinking. Aegis decides what targets to engage, coordinates across all ships so that two ships aren't firing at the same missile. It's incredible. We've had that tech since like the 80s. And it's needed because, you know, in naval warfare, Missiles are coming in so fast, things are happening so fast that only a computer can really engage these threats and deal with these threats. So the question here is, you know, are we ready to let drones make the same decisions in the air 
as we allow them to make in the Patriot system, in the Aegis system, on ground, on a ship. Let me tell you a secret. Um, if you want to get technical, helicopters have been obsolete since the day they were invented. Um, 5,000? Oh, yeah, 5,600. 5,600 helicopters were lost in Vietnam. That is like a ridiculous number. They were slow. They were vulnerable. They got lit up by RPGs, machine guns. But guess what? We never stopped using them. Because helicopters can do things that no drone or jet can do, right? They hover. They maneuver in tight spaces. They provide close air support um, in ways that, that no other aircraft can really match. So until drones can do all of that, helicopters aren't going anywhere, even though helicopters are extremely vulnerable to enemy fire. Having a pilot on the ground, well, in the air, <laughs> in a specific area, who's able to make decisions regardless of jamming in the electromagnetic spectrum is really useful. So will drones, and, will drones make jets and helicopters obsolete? Maybe one day, if we fully embrace Hoodle, and give killer robots complete control. But until then, uh, manned aircraft provides something that drones can't. Resilience, adaptability, real-time human decision-making. And remember, the second you declare something obsolete in warfare, someone's going to find a reason to keep using it. Just ask the infantry. Hey, uh, you know, signed copies of my book, The Wind Machine, are available back on Bunker Branding. You can also get one of my T-shirts from there. The Intel Life T-shirt's pretty darn popular. Thank you guys so much for watching. Wow, this girl from Watertown sure is cool. Hey kid, what's going on? Think Tank! You know, a girl from Watertown is kind of like riding a moped. It's lots of fun till your friends see you on one. What's really cool is a t-shirt or hoodie from Bunker Branding. Wow, Intel Life, Control C, Control V. That's exactly what we do. And Bunker Branding has all sorts of cool gear. Intel Life, Air Assault. Live, laugh, launch for Destroyer, Trident, High Mars, and Patriot. Think outside the bomb, Drone Sweet Drone, Department of the Boat People, Landmines, and even the Tow Missile. It would behoove you to grab one today. Girls from Watertown aren't cool, so wear your bunker branding gear. Now I know. And knowing's half the bell. Hey, babe, you want to dance? Bunker branding.